Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called What's Good About Open Sim 0.9.1? Our speaker is Kayaker Magic and Mike Laurie. Please check out the website. Oh, excuse me. Let me go ahead and introduce them. Kayaker has been a tester for OpenSim for many years and submitted many bug reports. Some of the features he will be talking about are fixes to bugs he reported himself. Mike has been a virtual worlds developer in Second Life and OpenSim for 14 years. And while in Second Life, he capitalized the Central Grid, the first major OpenSim grid in 2008. Involved in Second Life as an estate owner, developer of first virtual stock exchanges, and owner of racing and combat sims, he's the leader of Save Our Sims movement and the Nabu region in Kitely with the Star Wars roleplay activities. Please check our website found at conference.opensimulator.org for the rest of the speaker bios, because those were the short versions, for details of the sessions and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC19. Well, welcome everyone. Let's begin the session. Over to you, Kayaker. Hello. Well, I noticed in the previous talk, the developers were asked a uh, a little bit about uh, the new OpenSim, and I hope I will be giving some uh, more information uh, about some of these these features. Uh, for example, there uh, were a lot of bug fixes, and uh, and I uh, hope in this talk to just demonstrate a few things that didn't used to work very well and now uh, do work a lot better. So uh, uh, here's uh, here's my short list of, of the my favorite things, and uh, let me demonstrate to uh, because I hope that most of the time I spend here will be demonstrating fun things and not uh, stumbling around saying um all the time. Uh, one of my favorite bugs, or at least uh, uh, least favorite bugs, let's call it, is a. Um, was a bug in uh, in a function called LL Listen, and this function uh, prevented uh, some of my scripts from working, and it was a uh, uh, a problem with uh, with how prims communicate with each other. So I have this tool here that I call Space Paint, and it lets me draw lines in uh, in the air with uh, with prims. These are uh, optimized mesh uh, uh, prims. You may have seen a, a similar tool in uh, Second Life a long time ago. I kind of uh, reverse engineered it. And uh, if I had uh, tried to run this here in the, um, in the center uh, along uh, a couple, well, even just last year, in version uh, uh, 0 0.8, it would have crashed after a few minutes. And this bug was insidious that it uh, once uh, one script ran into this problem, it caused scripts all over the rest of the region to fail. And so, uh, uh, so I'm real happy to see uh, uh, lots of little bugs like this fixed. So I heard the. Uh, well, I didn't hear the developers being asked much about physics, and certainly uh, the conference center here is so far behind in uh, in uh, physics that uh, that many people may not have uh, have well, no one has ever seen good physics running here in the convention in the convention center. As far as uh, as I know, it's uh, still not. Um, it's still not running right uh, in in this uh, region, and so we can't actually demonstrate uh, uh, physics. But one of the things I can demonstrate is that the physics engine uh, has an optimized version of a function called castray. Now, castray uh, 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 is used a lot in weapons, and it also could be used for a laser pointer. 
and uh, laser pointers uh, would be useful in the conference center. And it's a shame that they uh, that they uh, didn't work here. Uh, although that seems uh, rather rather boring to me. And so I have something here that's related to one of one of my toys, which is a, a snowball tossing uh, uh, tool. <laughs> and I'm going to demonstrate it now if I can. Instead of throwing snowballs, I'm going to throw uh, tomatoes. And I had an idea. And it doesn't seem, oh. I had an idea of making a tool that would allow the people in the audience to rate the uh, the speakers by uh, throwing tomatoes at the speakers who did uh, poor presentations, and uh, and then um, instead of tomatoes, if there was somebody who gave a presentation you liked, you would throw roses at them. Uh, Mike, you could uh, uh, help by uh, demonstrating this. I gave you a copy of this this tosser. So if you see somebody, if somebody gives a talk that you like, you throw roses at them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, attendees here aren't allowed to run scripts, and so uh, so only uh, me and the other speakers are allowed to uh, to use this tool. So that's just uh, something fun to look at. You've heard uh, people talking about Animesh, uh, and there were some dancing uh, animals behind uh, the uh, the sofa earlier. And uh, and you also may have seen uh, there was a dancing uh, Spider-Man to my right a little bit ago. It seems to be gone now. Uh, so a lot of people see Animesh. The only examples that you see are uh, are uh, dancing avatars. So if you saw a dancing avatar, you'd think, well, that's just an avatar. You'd think it was just a non-playing character, and uh, and you uh, you might say, we, what? Well, what's new? Uh, what's interesting about Animesh? Well, there's a couple things, and one of them is that a uh, it's not just uh, uh, avatar meshes that can be animated, although uh, that's uh, that's kind of fun, and you can imagine it being used on um, on other things like critters. There's one. The uh, the one important feature about Animesh is that it's just a prim. It's a mesh prim. That uh, anybody can res, whereas uh, NPCs are restricted usually, so that only the uh, the region owner or the region uh, 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 estate manager can uh, can create NPCs, or uh, you you could uh, uh, change your private region so that anybody could run NP NPCs. Most uh, uh, commercial grids don't allow that, and so Animesh allows you to create critters. That anybody can buy from the uh, uh, the Kite Market, for example, and then res in their land. And also, uh, uh, in the past, a lot of animated critters, and I'm going to demonstrate one. This uh, this critter is an old one. That is done without Animesh, and uh, and therefore all the legs are made out of um, out of a whole bunch of prims, and there there's a lot of bandwidth to uh, to make those uh, those prims uh, move uh, because uh, each leg is I think four prims in this case, and they. Uh, uh, they, they, you have to send a separate message to each uh, for each prim to the server, and so there's traffic uh, uh, going back and forth to the viewer to update all of all of this information. It is uh, tremendously difficult on the um, 
on the server. And so uh, an animesh would allow this critter to be a single prim that has an armature. And then when it's animated, an animation is sent to the viewer and the viewer does all the work and the poor hard working server is, uh, is open for doing, uh, for doing other things. I'm... So <laughs> that's sort of the ordinary uh, view that everybody thinks that uh, animesh is going to be good for, but it's going to be good for other things. And uh, I think th this is this is really going to be big. Oops. I have a flag here, which uh, is uh, like Animesh. Uh-oh, yeah. This flag is animated by the viewer, not by the server. So it, it uses no server resources to make the flag wave. And Animesh is going to allow me to take this flag and have it sag like cloth when the wind dies down and have it turn and point in different directions when the wind changes with very little work by the server. So we're going to make the viewer do more of the work by, by turning the flag into an animesh and sending it animation files to tell it to, to wave at different speeds when the wind changes and stuff like that. So a uh, uh, animesh is going to make uh, non-critter things like this uh, work faster. Right. So uh, one way to think about Animesh is, is it's a way you can make your own custom flexies. So I think there's there's going to be thousands of, uh, of applications, for example, hair that animates uh, differently. You could Animesh your clothing. What an interesting idea. There's just so many possibilities here. The mind boggles. And one of the ones that, that uh, I've been playing with Animesh in uh, in HiFi a little bit, it's something that's similar to Animesh, and I well, I was working there on a project w which was which isn't working very very well, and I but I'd love to have it here in OpenSim, which is a water prim that has an armature. Well, what is an arm What good is an armature in in water? Well, you load an animation into it, and the water rises up into waves and starts to ripple, and like the flag. You could make the water uh, uh, change directions. You could make the waves get taller and thinner by loading up different um, uh, uh, different animation files. So it's not just for pets and dancing avatars. It's going to be, I think it's going to be uh, really big. I can't seem to uh, delete that flag. I'm going to have to to leave it there. So, uh, I mentioned. Uh, I started to mention that uh, physics is another thing that has changed. Certainly here in this uh, in this region, a lot of people are familiar with uh, with uh, UBODE. Uh, Mike, is is your um, microphone working? Would you like to uh, talk about? Uh, about physics in, uh, in oh, sure. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, this, as being involved in, in doing uh, Star Wars role play, there's obviously a lot of uh, vehicle use in, in that sort of stuff, as well as with combat role play or anything like that. And so having realistic vehicle uh, physics is really important and we've had this problem in OpenSim for years where ODE didn't even have a functioning Z axis, vertical axis in the vehicle engine so the vehicles hardly worked at all in ODE and they worked somewhat in bullet but you'd have to radically change the engine parameters from the second life settings so because of the way that the friction worked differently and so forth. So the, the fantastic work that UBIT has done uh, on UBODE, it makes vehicle performance much more like the SL uh, performance using the same 
uh, script settings uh, for the vehicle functions. Um, so that's really a big advantage because it, it uh, reduces the uh, amount of uh, 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 the problem in, in jumping over. If someone wants to bring content from Second Life to to have their role play or, or you know, let's say car racing or, or sailboat racing activities here, it's a lot easier to port that content with an UBODE physics engine from Second Life without much modification of the scripts compared to having to do so with uh, uh, the earlier physics engines. Another thing that most people think would be minor about uh, the uh, a change that uh, UBIT is implemented with UBODE is that you now uh, sit where you point. You did, like this is this prim this long prim right here is uh, unscripted. And normally in OpenSim, if you try to sit on an unscripted prim, you're by default sitting on the the center point of, of that prim or the center point of the root of the link set. But here now, you sit where you point. So I'm going to point right here, and I'm sitting on the end of this prim. And you can have multiple people sitting on the same prim in different points, and you don't have to worry about anything like like we've run into with for years. <laughs> so this is for for minor things. You know, not so minor because you know we've got a ton of people sitting on a lot of prims here in this amphitheater, and re that requires a lot of scripting. And so we really don't need that now with UBODE. You can you know sit where you point. And, you know, and so it saves a whole lot of, of, of lag, a lot of script uh, uh, load on the, the, the simulator. So it's, that's fantastic. Um, now, as a third thing that I really like because I'm, in, I'm into space travel is hyperspace jumping. So not only can, will objects cross region boundaries now, uh, and you can drive vehicles across region boundaries, you can hyperspace jump from region to region that are not connected. So, and that are on different grids. So I could get into my Star Wars Star, uh, Star Destroyer. Well, I'm calling it hyperspace because that's what the function is, where you can hyperspace jump across the hypergrid with, while riding your vehicle. So I could fly my Star Destroyer from Kitely into Open Sim Grid and have a space battle and then hyperspace jump it back to my base in Kitely. Okay. <laughs> really, really fun. Okay. <laughs> hey, thank you, Mike. And thank you, Kayaker, for a wonderful session. We uh -oh. appreciate it. <laughs> are we out of time? We are. Oh, but dang. But I'd like to remind everyone to go visit them at their display booth in the OSCC Expo 3 region. And if you guys want to give them your booth number, or we can look that up after the session. But as a reminder to our audience, and I'd like to thank both Kayaker and Mike Lurie for a fantastic session. You can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Now, following this session, the next session will begin at 8 a.m., in this keynote region, and it is entitled Extinction Global, How Open Simulator Can Save the World in a Fridge. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Expo Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on the speaker presentations and to explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, their sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions.